for Carolyn and etc. What I'm going to do is see if we can actually boot into GNOME now. The next section is required runtime dependencies, although looking through at them, through them, it seems like um, we might be able to get something up and running. So I just wanted to see what what we have got running. So I'm going to log out of XFCE and see if we can select GNOME now. Okay, it's not actually here. Apart from the option there, so I'm not sure if this will work. No, it's not. Um, okay, let's go back to XFCE. The thing is, in the book, there's no actual information for setting up known to be the um, current desktop manager so I, I don't know if that's me because like I said I haven't, I haven't installed it for many many years or if um, there is something missing um, if we go to the top there's nothing there about setting up GNOME or whether indeed it still needs something else to get it going I mean it could be this GNOME session it needs to get running or this GDM possibly so um, I think the best thing to do then is to carry on um, and maybe have a go after the required runtime dependencies have been installed so let's just check what we've got here that's okay So the next, or well, the first one for required runtime defenses is dconf. We've already installed that and the editor as well, so we can skip past that and go straight onto known backgrounds. So let's save this into GNOME. So there's no extra options, just build and install and that's it. And that's that package installed. So the next package, GVFS, we've already installed. We'll skip over that one, as we have with GXIV. So the next package we're going to install is Nautilus, which is the um, file manager for GNOME. Okay, so I don't know if there's any extra options. Just configure and build it, and then we can do a test for the looks of it. So ninja test.
Okay, that's completed successfully, so we can install this now. And that's done. So now we move on to the next package called Zenity. This is just a straightforward configure, make and make install once we've changed into the appropriate directory. No test suite, so now we can just install it. Oops. That's complete. Just tidy up, tick that one off. So the next package we've got is GNOME Bluetooth. Again, no extra options, just accept the default commands. And use Ninja install. Install it, and it's done. So it's known Bluetooth. So next package gnome keyring we've already installed, so we'll skip over that one onto gnome settings daemon. Um, now I've got one dependency here. Wacom driver, I think we've already installed that. Oh it's the XORG Wacom driver. Um, so I'm not going to bother installing that because um, there was a little point. I mean, I, well, I suppose we could actually because we've installed the actual Wacom driver itself. Um, so let's download that. Not going to worry about the kernel. And I'll just move this. In fact, I'll extract it first and then move the driver into XC where it belongs. So let's change into the directory and there's no other options, just configure and make. Make check. That's all done. So do one say make install. That's done. So did we download that one? No, no we haven't. So let's get that. So let's configure and build that. There are some tests, but it says that the Python Dbus mock must be installed. Um, and also it says there's a new, new mock dev required for tests. So 
I'm going to run this, but I'd expect quite a few to fail. And surprisingly, it's passed, so maybe that's not requirement, or maybe the tests are intelligent and found that that package wasn't installed. So I'll install this package and it's done. So it's known settings daemon and onto known control center. And this has got three dependencies. This has got one dependency. One Polka also syndication agent with Polka in the graphical environment. So we need GNOME shell. shell and that is actually one of the packages we need to install in a few packages time so that will be one we can skip over um, actually it does say it's a runtime requirement so we can do that when we come to it and I've just got to remember to click on mutter because I've clicked on it so the link would have changed. So let's extract this. Right, I don't know is it Does this come from GNOME applications? Right, okay, so it does belong here. Network manager applet. Oh yes, this is the pre-penultimate package that we installed actually. So not to worry. Right, let's get the build directory made and then we can set this to true because we've got Jansen installed. We haven't got the mobile broadband provider as we've found out already. And we can set the GTK doc to true because we should be able to build that. What else have we got? WWN. Well, we've got modem manager installed. We did have some problems with that, so we might have to use this switch. So let's see how we get on with those settings. There's no complaints there, so let's run Ninja. And ninja test. That's a pass. And now we can do a ninja install. And that's complete. So network manager applet. Cross that one off. Next we've got libhandy, which is an X library, so we'll have to move this one. And that can 
just go into the parent directory. And make the build directory and configure with meson and we can add in gck doc is true and now we can build it with ninja and install Ninja install. And that's done. Oops. So that was chapter twenty five, lib handy. got a package called cheese which needs clutter GST so this is another X library so again I'll move this parent directory and then extract it from there. The right one GST not GS GTK and simple configure make install. done. So let's cut it GST. Now we can build cheese which is actually a GNOME application. So that's one we would have come to do anyway. So it's got some settings, what is this for? Oh, it's used to take photos of fun graphical effects. Okay, so I haven't got any cameras installed on this machine, so I'm not even bother setting the um, kernel. But obviously, if you want to, um, quite welcome to, of course. Let's, um, let's use the current one. Big grep. So it's probably not set. No, it doesn't look like it's even there. So I imagine that would be that the media USB support's not there either. As I'm not going to bother setting the hardware in the kernel because I haven't got that. Um, I'll just install this package for anything that needs it, which is what it is, it's dependency. So sudo so say ninja install. And that's complete. Cheese, mark that one off, and 
Now we can do the Gnome Control Center. Oh, didn't see these optional runtime dependencies. Sound theme free desktop. So this is straightforward package. Assuming it's worked, we can just come up with these options. Let's run and make again. It seems to have worked alright. So I should do minus A, make install. Alright, that's done. That's in section forty two. Sound theme. Very desktop. So now we do known color manager. So link as So we've got doc book utils installed, so we need to disable the main pages. Or is it won't build? We can configure and build it. And install it. That's that one done. So um, this is going to be one of the known packages that we would have built anyway in section 34 known color manager. Now we've got cups PK helper. And that belongs in the parent directory. Again, simple configure and make and uh, make install. So that's that done. So back to the known control center. this now. Uh, yep, we just take default commands. We've got everything, all the dependencies, and we've got the iBus.
and let's install it. That's complete. Um, control center. Alright, so now we're going to install a package that I thought I might have to remember to install, but no, we've got it to install now. So next we're going to do pipe wire, which is a dependency. So we can create some documents and man pages as well. So that's built and we can do um, ninja install, let's get it installed and it's done. And this is part of 42. Install Mutter. Oh, let's tidy this one up. And download it. There's no extra options, so we just build it as it is. Right, so that's built successfully. We can run ninja test. It says some tests will fail. So we'll see how it goes.
Okay, yeah, some quite a few failed there. It says it's the fail because of a um, Wayland session needed. So I imagine that's why they all failed quite spectacularly. So let's install the package. Oops. That's complete. So let's mark off Mutter. It's got no Michelle. Alright, this needs some dependencies. So let's complete those first. We need GDM and telepathy mission, although the runtime dependencies. Let's move this first. So we can configure with some documentation here. Then run make. And then we can install the package. That's done. And this is chapter 11 so now we've got GDM which needs no session No options, so we'll just build as it is. And use Ninja to install it. That's done. So this is actually part of the chapter 33 that we're currently in. In fact, Oh, that's strange. That's the one we were trying to build. So I'm not sure how we got to GDM actually. I mean, that's one that's coming up. Um, oh no, sorry, we we're trying to build GNOME Shell. I've just crossed off the wrong one. So it's GNOME Session we've done. That's right, that makes sense now. What I'm going to do is. Because I'm not sure if that session is the one that controls GNOME from starting. So I'm just trying to learn a bit more about GNOME here while testing things. So I'm going to log out, switch this over. Yeah, we've got a separate GNOME now. And see if we can actually log in. No, it's still quite not right. So that's obviously why it says, as it says, that the required runtime dependencies 
But what I'm going to do is to log in again to XFCE and I'm going to try after GDM because this is the bit that manages, as it says there, the graphical logins and local and remote display. So it could be that it gets working after this one. So GDM. So it recommends building a group and a user. So let's do that. And then we've got some extra options here. So let's get this set in. And then copy this. So with initial VT7, that's a good one to have. So the graphical display uses VT7, which is pretty standard. Without Plymouth, we haven't got that. With default PAM config, with LFS. Alright, so we've got the LFS release file. So we don't need that. Enable GDM. And that's already in there. So that should be enough to configure this. Make and let's install it. That's done. I'm just going to do LD config. Shouldn't need that to log in, but we'll try it anyway. So I'm going to log out again, just try once more. Oops, not the one. So I'll switch it back over to GNOME. No, it's still not working. Okay, so we'll just carry on now um, with GNOME Shell. I mean, it could be this one that's the one that's stopping. And it's obvious that we need everything anyway, but um, it's just a part of the learning process for me. So this is GNOME Shell. What does this actually do? It's a cool user interface. Okay, so this is the bit that it's probably trying to, be in, trying to load. Right, so it looks like we'll just take the defaults. We'll have some tests. Looks okay, and install again. done. So that's GNOME Shell. So the next one's GNOME Shell Extensions, but I'm going to try once more again. Click the right option. So 
select GNOME. Yeah, there's something actually happened there. Yeah, we've got a GNOME desktop now. Just looking where to disable the power, but looks, oh, here it is. Power. Disable the screen saver. Okay. Um, not really sure of my way around this too much. It's quite basic at the moment, but then we haven't installed any specific. That should be Nautilus. Yeah, that's running fine. Not sure what this is show applications. All oh, right, okay. This looks very much like a Mac. The way this is. Laid out in the appearance, it's got that sort of same same sort of feel. Um, so it's load Falcon. That loads fine. And let's load a terminal. XFC terminal. Yeah, that's loaded fine. So we could carry on here actually. Let's just check the preferences here. Um, actually, it might be here. Just want to check the keyboard preferences. Yeah, they're set back to US. So let's see if I can just right click background actually settings keyboard shortcuts regional language right so let's add in an English United Kingdom add and remove the US. Let's see if that's yeah, that's changed it, so that's good. I can carry on then. Although I'm not doing that much typing, it's just if I do need to type anything, I don't get caught out with the wrong characters appearing. So let's zoom in a little. Okay. This um, feels and looks much better known than I ever remember, but then that is, let's say, 10 or 15 years ago. So let's go back to the sources BLFS. So we've done GNOME shell, so let's do some extensions back to GNOME. Straightforward. Configure and it looks like that's it. It's quick.
Ja, wir so dann. Quite sure that built additional optional functionality. There's no shell, so don't know if we'll start seeing things appearing or whatever. So that's that one. We've done GNOME session already, so we'll skip over that. We've done GDM, so we'll skip over that. And the next one got is GNOME user docs. So this is documentation for GNOME. Configure, make, make, install. Let's install that. That's finished. No use of docs and move on to Yelp next. And help if we downloaded it first. documentation on the configure command and build package and install it And we need to do this command. Imagine there's root, yes. Didn't actually say that. Oh yes, still as a root user, big pardon. So that's done. So notification daemon and polkit gnome have been done. So we don't need to do them and that ends the runtime required dependencies for GNOME. So the next section we'll be doing is GNOME applications.